All right, hello everyone. This is the ADHD Gamer, and you are here for what would be, I want to say, part four of the base guide, Mare Valley. So this base brings us to Mazara Farm. It is a five-man, 1,000 influence base, and we will start with the location before I even claim it because it has in my opinion, the best location in this map. It is almost smack dead center in the middle, which makes it quick to deploy in any direction. And on top of that, you are right beside the river, which as you know, you can just drive straight down that river to get to the bottom or straight up to get to the top. It is quite a fantastic little super highway, and there is even an area right there where you can drive down to the river and just load right into it, which is quite fantastic. But before I get off on too much of a tangent, let's go ahead and come claim our new base. So, Mazara Farm, a ranch-style house with good soil, grain storage, and a working well. Perfect for the community that intends self-sufficiency. As I said, it costs a thousand influence, and you must have five community members. It comes in with a built-in country kitchen, well house, crew house, and a grain silo storage, which will store a ton of food. It also has two parking slots and fertile soil, which will allow you to grow food at a higher rate. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and claim the base. All right, so here we are, claimed in at Mazara Farm. Oh, look at that. The Wandering Trader popped up right where I'm at. That's rare. Anyways, let's take a look at the base. So here you have the front with your two parking, your command center, and the crew house. Crew house gives you four beds and three morale. I am loving the fact that you are getting morale out of these built-in beds. It is quite fantastic. And it also has a mod slot for whatever you want. Then it also has the country kitchen. And uh, it seems to be a normal kitchen. It says knowledge of cooking. It gives you just knowledge of cooking. That's what it is. So you get knowledge of cooking just by being in the base, which means you can do all the basic stuff that you need cooking to be able to do. Not nutrition, but cooking. Then you have the well house, which allows you to collect water, which is awesome for mid-game because it's unlikely that when you move in here, you've claimed any utilities. So it already comes with water built in. And then here is the grain silo storage. It comes maxed out. You get plus 35 to everything, but food. You get a plus 50 for food. So that means you can hold 85 food which is ridiculous now from the built-ins that we have you also have once again three customizable small slots and two large slots one small inside two small outside so very similar to the police station very similar the primary difference here, of course, is that you don't have fire safe storage, you have food storage, you don't have the armory, you have a kitchen, and then you also have a built-in well house. So you will get a amenity instead of a guard tower. Now, I prefer this because, as I said before, the guard tower is pretty much useless. And I don't really use bullets that much in the higher difficulties, so it was useless. But then again, I don't really use the kitchen either, so it doesn't really do much for me. But it is a win having the well house. Now, I'm going to essentially construct this very similar to how I constructed the previous base. 
I'm going to stick my infirmary inside because you should rest inside just by logic standpoint. And then the workshop and the fighting gym outside on either side of the well house. Now for this base, as it said, you get better food when you build farms here. So we will build a garden just to see how much you would get just out of having a garden here. I would never actually build the garden here. This is just a cheap base to get into quickly with a good location. But we will build the garden to see what it actually does. And while that's building, it's the same options as the previous just here. You won't be able to quite do the salvage combo. I mean, you, you could get most of it. You could do a forge and an auto shop with a salvage furnace plus the workshop and get times three, but you can't get the times four. You can also do, as I said before, you can do the field hospital and infirmary and do double primary care. You can put a Haven device if you have one. I, it, it doesn't really do much for me, but you can do it. But as with the previous one, I would stick with what I would call the meta. They're the powerful. Go lounge and trade depot. Then while all of that is constructing, we will start putting in mods. And we will go for a quick tour of the perimeter of the base. I love how it always parks my two vehicles not in the slots. Like I bring this and park it to the side on purpose and there they go parking that over there. So I'm going to have to move it again. I digress. So this base is also quite well fortified like the police station. So all of these pointy parts, they cannot climb over at all. These tall parts, we can climb over, and so can the zombies. So they can get over in that little bitty portion, and right here. Then the gate is blocked, so they would funnel to the gate if they came up right here. Then they can climb there. You've got this barbed wire running most of the length of the back. And then you have that spot where you can climb over and right here where you can climb over along with a gate getting to the back. And as you can see back here, it just rolls right down into this river so that you can go wherever you please. If you go that way, you'll get to the Bounty Broker and Whitney Field. If you go this way, you will head back to the church. And actually, you can see the church right there and the uh, the factory over there along with the exit of the map. Over here you've got another spot they can climb and a gate. Typically they go to that gate pretty heavily. And then back to the front you've got this little spot. Now I will say when I do come under a siege at this base I have a tendency to just come right on up top here and I can just watch everything unfold. I can see the full perimeter of the base save maybe that corner. But as for everything else I can see what's going on and I can deal with them appropriately. Just like that. Oh look we have a friend. Beat them up, boys. Silly feral. He thought he could beat up on us just because we're in a small base. But he can't get to me. Nothing can get to me up there. It is a safe location, and you can. You can watch the entire base. It is quite nice for just not having to deal with sieges. Just let your community do it. Returning to the base screen, so we have the gist and our garden. So you get a plus 30% food per day. So that's not terrible, that's not really great either, but 
it is not bad either. So we end up with one and a half food per day out of a farm. That's not too terrible. It's not great either. If I'm not mistaken, I believe everybody eats like two food per day on lethal. So that would only take care of a singular person. So not too great. Of course, you can upgrade it and it would go to two. And then you'd probably get two and a half or two and three quarter food. It's still not that great. It's not worth it. Just get the food outposts. Trust me. So we will go back to our OG and put the fighting gem in. We will put our salvage furnace. And I am out of labor. Luckily, we have the gist of what I would build here. Of course, I would max some of this stuff a little bit farther out. The workshop and infirmary, I wouldn't end up going more than level 2, so I don't have the material losses. Then, once I had that started building, I would promote a sheriff and go lounge level 3, so that I can get passive training, morale boost, bed boost, all that good stuff. It, it's quite worth it. Then, comfy chairs, you can plug in comfy chairs all over the place the only thing that's weird is the grain silo no slot can't put anything there but you can put it in the well house this is where i usually put my fireworks station so i can craft my pyro launcher ammo because let's be honest it's fun to burn stuff but as before with the rural police station this is a small base there's not a ton to it it, it is where I honestly try to go for mid-game, just because of the location, because it makes it a little bit easier for me to get around and on higher difficulties when you consume a lot more fuel, that is quite a helpful benefit. Now, you will outgrow that problem as you progress into the game. You will gather more and more fuel, and it'll become less and less of a problem and just more of an annoyance. That being said, I still like this base because of the location. It does give me a reasonable amount of power. I mean, it takes care of my water problem. I still have my three primary small slots that I want. And it also gives me my two large slots that I want. So, all in all, for a mid-game base, it is quite reasonable. Comparing it to the police station that we did before... Uh, equal amount of plague hearts covering them I would probably take Mazara now that being said if the police station is free and uncovered but Mazara has plague hearts covering it I would go to the police station just that simple I, I don't want to start my headaches any earlier than I really have to Especially on, as I keep saying, those higher difficulties. But I, I would take the police station over Mazara if it was uncovered and Mazara wasn't, and vice versa. Now, if they both had one, two, or three plague hearts on them, and just for the sake of argument, we'll say Camp Kellenqua and the church are also covered up by plague hearts. I would take Mazara just for this location. It is nice and central, nice and easy to deploy and get around. Like I said, you've got the river. You can just cross straight over the river. You've got all of this stuff right here. The starter location, you can finish looting out. It is quite handy for that purpose of gaining power, which is what the mid-game is supposed to be. You're supposed to be gaining the power to be able to smash the blood plague and in my opinion being able to deploy out in any direction very quickly is very essential to that process so of the bases that we've looked at between clarington the police station and obviously mazara and we've looked at whitney field but it's a class of its own so i'm not even going to include it into this but of those three that we have looked at over here, this is probably my favorite of them and the most handy for the mid-game. And that's where we're going to 
draw the line, call it a conclusion. Between Rural Police Station and Mazara, I prefer Mazara because it allows me to have more things that would be useful to me personally. Now, if you're play style, you like playing with guns, Police Station's all you. If you don't play with guns and you tend to try and stay a little bit quieter and not as dangerous, Mazara is for you. You get your amenity right out of it. It's got the same slots that you can customize. I mean, it works out well. The beds with the uh, the morale bonus, you don't have to upgrade anything to get that. You've just got it. So you don't have to spend any time or materials or anything like that to upgrade it, which is useful in and of itself. But that is the conclusion of this base guide so far. Mazara is the mid-game that you kind of want to go for if you can. And with that, I guess we will conclude it. Please like and subscribe if you have any comments, questions, emotional outbursts, ideas for other videos. Please leave me a comment down below. I will read them as they come through. It might be a little tricky to do so if I get too many, but it's not that big a deal. Please leave them, and if you have good ideas, I would rather get to them sooner rather than later. But, as always, I'm the ADHD Gamer. I appreciate y'all's time, and I will see you on the next one.